Okay, for this activity, we're gonna be setting up our Hot Wheels track. So you should be able to take all your pieces of Hot Wheels, connect them together, and find your Hot Wheels car. So mine's a nice little purple one. The one thing you wanna to wanna to do is use like your textbook, and then find the point at where um, your car when released. So like, I'm gonna start with my car here. I want it to be able to stop on the track, okay? So in other words, I need to make sure that I have enough track so that it'll work. So I'm just gonna adjust this one because I want it to actually stop on the track, okay? So I added like a notebook and a textbook and a book book. And so I'm just gonna run this down and I see that it stops pretty much right on the track. So that's the goal. The other thing that you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you find the point at where your track kind of is flat on the ground because we want to find that flat point. Now I've adjusted mine so that it's kind of at the point where one of these intersections is. And then I'm going to just make sure that I lay my tape measure out so that I can measure a time and a distance. Okay, so two things that you need to be able to do. You're going to start the timer once the car gets to this point, that's the flat point on the track. And we're gonna stop the timer when the car stops down there. And then we're, we're gonna measure our distance and we're measuring again in centimeters. So make sure that you get your measurement um, for your distance and your time. And then once you're done with that and you uh, are gonna collect another trial, so my next trial will probably be one where I'm just gonna take away one of these books. I'm gonna adjust it and you're gonna see that then it won't go as far. So again, I'm shortening it each time. So you're gonna do three trials of this. And then after you're done with those three trials, you're gonna go through and watch the rest of the video for uh, doing the calculations. All right, so we're gonna go through and do the uh, calculations now. You have both a time and a distance. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we have to figure out what the uh, acceleration was for the car. So if we think about what was happening to our car, so let's just kind of look at the car itself. Okay, the car started up here on a little bit of an incline, and then as the car went down the hill, it got to a point right here where that's the flat part. And that's kind of like the fastest speed that it would have. So this would be our fastest velocity. Okay, and that's really what we're looking for. This is the question that I'd like to know in the end of the lab. Now what happens here is our car starts to slow down. So again, we think of it in terms of the dots getting closer and closer until finally it comes to rest. So this is a point when the velocity went to zero centimeters per second. Okay, so we know that this car is slowing down. So what happens between here and here is that we're experiencing acceleration. Now really this acceleration is gonna be a negative value because it's showing that it's slowing down. You have both the time and the distance associated with this. So these are your two data points. So let's look at how we're going to solve this. So first thing that we're gonna to have to do is find this. So that's our first step. And then our second step will be to find the velocity. So I like to use a formula, and this is one that you can go ahead and write down and put in your notes. We're gonna use it again. But this is going to be that the distance is equal to one half the acceleration times squared. Now, this one works whenever there's going to be either a starting or a final velocity equal to zero. So this is when one velocity equals zero. So we usually like to use this whenever we see one of our velocities equals zero. Now, to put this into a triangle shape, I'm gonna do this. So this is gonna be my distance. I'm gonna put the one half there, the acceleration there, and the time squared there. So that's how we kind of set it up. Now we're looking for the acceleration. So I'm gonna cover up my acceleration. So really it's going to be the distance divided by half 
and divided by the time squared. So to find the acceleration, it's the distance divided by half and the time squared. And you have your distance and you have your time squared. So like if I give an example, so here's some data that I was able to collect. So I know that I have a um, time for one of my runs that was 6.26 seconds. And I know that I had a distance that was equal to 98 centimeters. So to find my acceleration, I'm going to take the, my distance, 98.0 centimeters, and I'm going to divide it by half and divide it by the time squared. This is a seconds squared. Okay, and so when I grab a calculator and I set this up, there we go. I'm going to take my distance, which is 98. I'm going to divide it by 0.5. That's the same as a half. I'm going to divide it by the 2.26. But because it's squared, I'm going to divide it again by 2.26. And that's going to give me my acceleration. Okay, so my acceleration came out to be 38.4. I'm just going to do a little rounding. Centimeters per second squared. Okay, now again, because I was slowing down, I know that my acceleration is going to be negative, so I'm going to make it a negative value, and that's what I'm going to enter into my spreadsheet or into the data table. The second thing that I want to do is I'm going to have to figure out that velocity. So I have a different relationship that we use to solve for that velocity, and that is that the um, velocity equals a t, okay, and again, this is when one of my velocities is zero. So this is going to be when one of my velocities is, oh, excuse me, hold on, delta v equals a t. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to set up my triangle to show this. And I'm going to show this as A there, T there, delta V there. Now again, what does delta V represent? So this is the change in velocity. And that change in velocity is really the final minus the starting. All right, because we're finding the starting velocity, okay, the change in velocity is that final velocity minus the initial. Our final velocity was zero, so really our starting velocity is going to be a negative value. So this is just going to be our uh, starting velocity. I'll use an S to represent starting. Is equal to the acceleration times the time. So our acceleration times our time. Now our acceleration we already have up here. That's a negative 38.4 centimeters per second squared. And we're going to times it by that same time that we have from our data. So 2.26 seconds. And so I'll just go ahead and do this. So take my 38.4 times my 2.26, that gives me 86.8 centimeters per second. Now the negative here and the negative here we're going to cancel out, and so then we get a positive velocity, and that's what we'll enter into our data table, or into our, our calculations table. So there's our acceleration, and there's our velocity. And you'll just do this for all three trials. If you do have any questions, make sure you reach out.